For ArcViz exterior shots or for environment shots, the environment lighting is so key for adding drama and mood to your project. Fortunately, there is a really easy way to do it with just a few of the available tools in Unreal Engine. My favorite way, and also arguably the easiest and most effective way too, is by lighting the scene with an HDRI. Since around Unreal Engine 4.27, this has become easier than ever with the HDRI Backdrop Actor. Let's examine how to use it, but also which techniques we can use to easily add drama to our scene. Okay, to see how the HDRIs work, I'm going to start with just a completely blank level. So first I will just drag in my cabin, which I already have existing, and you'll see that there's nothing to light it yet. Kind of appeared there, but nothing here. All we need to do, we don't have a template here, so there's nothing lighting our scene. All we need to do though is bring in an HDRI backdrop. So we just go to add to scene, lights, HDR backdrop, drag it in. and we just need to get it about the right height, a little bit under our cabin. This scale by default comes in at 150, which is not big enough to engulf our scene. So let's set it to 1500. And then we'll see that the light is already lighting our scene appropriately. If we rotate, it rotates and the lighting changes on our scene, depending where the sun is right over here for that HDRI. Okay, so already you can see how easy it is to light your scene. You could add a direct light in that location right there to make it even more accurate, I guess. But already it's casting nice lights, very nice environment light for the scene. Now let's create our own. This is the default to create your own HDRI and instantly change the mood, look, and amount of drama in your scene. You can go and download your own HDRI and bring it in here and change entirely how your scene is going to look. If we look at the documentation, there's a lot of good information here on the HDRI backdrop. And one of the things they share here is that this tip right here, use HDRI Haven site to download something interesting, some interesting HDR images for free. Okay. If we go to HDRI Haven, this link, it actually takes us to polyhaven.com and you can just go to the HDRIs and find whatever look you want for your scene here and then download that HDRI. So I already have some cloudy ones downloaded. Let's get something different, but nice. Some cool lighting situation. I mean, you can see how many options there are here. There's tons of them. I like to use the ones that don't have any of the trees and stuff and are just these kind of solid sky things because that way it's not gonna interfere with what I have in my scene. That one's kind of cool. It has some ground, but doesn't have a bunch of trees and stuff that are going to show up in my scene that I don't want. Okay, so you got to find the right situation. That one is the same kind of thing. Up here, all these ones that are just sky, which is kind of nice. I'm going to try this one. Now, when you're downloading, you want to download as an HDRI because that's what will be understood by Unreal Engine. If you only have EXR option, you can get that and then convert it to HDR, save it as an HDR in Photoshop. You want the 4K version? Yeah, 4K works fine. Let's just download it. Okay, once you have that downloaded, you have to do some things to the settings. You can, I already have it here, but you can import it by just going here and importing your image into here. Actually, this is a different one, so great. Now we have three different ones. If I go to this one that I just imported, we'll look at the settings that are essential to make it work. The largest dimension is 4096. So under compression, we need to go to advanced and say make sure maximum texture, texture size is 4096. And in the MIP gen settings, we need to make sure that instead of from texture group, we're putting it to no MIP maps. And that just means that it's not going to downgrade itself and be low resolution because we want this full resolution at all times because it's our sky and our background. So save it like that. We can close out of this and that thing's ready to roll. All you need to do is select your HDRI, open your content drawer. Let's make sure, yeah, the HDRI is selected. 
Here's our slot for our materials. Now any one of these skies that I've got set up can be put into here. Let's get the one we just downloaded and put it in. Okay, there it is. It's nice sunset lighting. We can rotate it to change the look. That's kind of cool. See, the lens flares are actually picking up the color of that sun properly, making a really bright orange like a sunset. Okay, and you can you can see, I'll demonstrate, this is all being used with just lumen. Okay, so it's kind of reflecting in the glass right now. We can make that a little better by using a post-process volume. All typical stuff that we'd always do. Unbound, let's make it unbound. And that means it's going to cover the whole scene. And then in the settings, we can go to the reflections here, make sure those are working well. So again, we're just using Lumen. We can, for the ray lighting mode, I'll put it to hit lighting for reflections. And we want to make sure that high quality translucency reflections are on for that glass. And there you go. Now we can see that HDRI nicely in our glass. Super cool. Look at that reflection right there. Very nice. So you can see we're seeing through the glass to that bed in there and also seeing the reflection of this, the HDRI, which is out here. So it's like our lighting and our reflections are going to match perfectly and they're set up very easily with just that one HDRI backdrop. Super, super cool. And you can see you can get interesting lighting based on just that. Now, the other thing you would want to do here, of course, is add in a ground. For that, I'll just do a landscape and move it down right there. Let's just create that like that. I'm going to put a simple texture on it that I already have in here. Okay, now see the lighting is working even better because we aren't getting, we aren't just floating in a sea of sky at this point. Okay, so there's not nice soft lighting going on. If you wanted a more direct light, then you could add a direct light right there where the sun is. Make it the right color to match this HDRI and it would cast nice shadows for you. Okay, that could look something like this. If you have your sun out there and you have a direct light that kind of matches it. Change that color to match the sun. Okay, so you could do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use the HDRI because that's what I'm demonstrating here. Now, if I just add a simple camera in here and then go to view that camera. Let's see what we can do to make this look even more dramatic. There's a couple things I'm thinking of. So first I want to mess with the exposure here, turn it to manual, and then just control the exposure by myself. I like it kind of like that. We're way too wide angle here, right? Get that reflection going on right there. Okay, my lens flares are too much. The bloom. Want that to be real subtle if it's there at all. Maybe that sky can be more like over here. You gotta get rid of those lens flares again. Or maybe we want them. But you can see how much power you can have just from doing HDRIs and adjusting that. You can make those lens flares go crazy if you want. Maybe right there. Okay, that's pretty cool. So you can get tons of, you can completely change the lighting of your scene just by using the HDRI, which I think is awesome. And if I wanted to change it even more, then of course I can just go to my other HDRIs in here. And I can change the HDRI to be something different if I want. Now it looks like that. Now it looks like this. Back to my sunset. Now it looks like that. Okay, so it completely can change it. You can rotate it. You can do what you want. The only thing you can't do is raise the sun up higher in the sky. Okay, so get an HDRI at the time of day that you want. Okay, and with a few more added effects that are very common in Unreal Engine, like atmospheric fog is what I'm thinking. Exponential height fog. Let's just look at it real quick to see what we can do, but 
the HDRI, you're already seeing it working. With that fog, I like to change it to volumetric. We can turn up the density 0.2. That's too high. 0.05. Okay, we're getting some nice volumetric fog here. We're getting some atmosphere going on so that sun is showing up more. We can adjust that actually by doing the, the fall off. So the fog, that's just making the fog go higher or lower in the sky. Okay, so if, the, if there's a lot of haze on the horizon, then you could put it more like this. And that changes your exposure some. Okay, this would need some adjustment in here to make that volumetric fog look right, but you can really get some nice effects. Let's turn that one off. That one came in via Datasmith. But if I just added one in from Unreal Engine, you can get some nice effects with it. Let's turn that color, use temperature, 3000. I turn that up quite a bit. And if we turned our fog up quite a bit, you could see some nice volumetrics going on as well. If I turn up the volumetric scattering intensity on that light, you can see that you get a nice volumetric light going on there. Personally, I think for the animations I've been creating recently, this has been a very useful tool to just use an HDRI, get exactly the mood and drama that I want, and then just combine it with some atmospherics to make it to make the background mesh with the scene and make the scene look further away as it gets further away from me using atmospheric and atmospheric depth and fog. That combined with the perfect sky and the perfect lighting that it creates gives you a very nice effect very easily. And that is how you use HDRIs, or that's how I use HDRIs and how you can implement them into your own projects as well. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, thanks as always for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful for some basic tutorial stuff on using HDRIs. I find them to be really nice, really useful. I use them all the time in 3ds Max and V-Ray and also now in Unreal Engine 5. So if you enjoyed this, make sure to like the video and subscribe if you want more information about Unreal Engine because I got a lot more stuff coming. And as you know, if you want more information about ArcViz in general, working in the industry, working in the different software, all those kind of things. And if you're just interested in architecture and how to show it very well using all the technologies out there, subscribe to the channel. That's what I'm all about. If you're interested in my free resources or in any of my courses, check out the links below. I even have a discounted course on my full Unreal Engine process. If you want to know more, go deeper than what you've seen in this video. So check it out. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.